And I run our engagement with uh, judges and attorneys who want to come learn about, for those of you neuroscientists in the room, axons and dendrites and cell bodies. And you say to yourself, why would a judge want to learn about cell biology? Because it turns out that the judge every day is dealing with animals, it happens to be the human animal made up of those cells. Um, and the judges have been very receptive to that. And you say, well, why does it matter? Because science provides the only way to think about these problems and solutions. He went on to say, as Professor Rosenberg could, and maybe a few of us can, science, not Ouija boards to run the world. And that's the basic idea. To the extent that we have opportunities to draw on other bodies of knowledge, not just neuroscience, but science generally, we might help to aid law. And that, to me, is the wide neuro law. Law is in the business of dealing with the human animal. And so if any body of knowledge, neuroscience or philosophy or English, can help us understand why we think the way we do, why we act the way we do, why sometimes we or others do not act or do not think the way we wish they would, then maybe that can give us some purchase on our jobs and help us do better law and policy. I'm going to show you a couple pictures of the studies they did. They're a little tough to look at, so I'll just preface it that way. There are studies that couldn't be done anymore, but they went like this um, in one of the local hospitals. They had patients who were coming in for seizure disorders, and they were doing deep, deep brain stimulation to treat those disorders. Well, in addition to treating those disorders, uh, the researchers thought maybe we can try and unpack violence and aggression in the brain. They focused a lot on the amygdala, and the idea was that we'll target the amygdala, we'll stimulate it, and we'll see what happens. And of course, they had altruistic motives because law policy has this intractable problem. We can't seem to get some people from stopping their, their violent behavior. Is there a way that science could help us? So here's a picture of their most famous patient, uh, patient Julia, figure four. Uh, Julia in a pleasant mood before deep brain stimulation. That's what the DBS stands for. Then they press a button, they fire the amygdala, and there she is. Julia after DBS, rage behavior, attacking wall suddenly and unexpectedly. Here's a point I want to make. Do you know how many times violence in the brain, again, what I just seem to be completely on point, was cited in the anatomy of violence? Zero times. Why? I asked Adrian, I said, why didn't you cite that book or any of that literature? His response, I never read it, right? I'm most excited by the fact that neuroscience isn't developing alone. And I want to emphasize this, that I don't think neuroscience is more important than genetics. Or I'm teaching a seminar right now on law and artificial intelligence. Um, I don't think it's more important than our deep learning, and robotics, virtual reality, advances in the biological science, computer science. I think these are all marching hand in hand. By the way, the same way that sociology and economics and political science marched hand in hand through most of the 20th century to develop their disciplines and their interdisciplinary work. This stuff is all coming, and neuroscience is a part of it. Sounds pretty good, right? Um, turns out there's an active debate amongst academics about whether playing such games actually gives you any cognitive, lasting cognitive benefit or just makes you better at playing those games. <laughs> this is, a, of course, a scientific question. It's a legal question, too, because we don't allow just folks to go out and say anything in the marketplace. And Lamosity said this so many times and in so many different ways that they were hit with an FTC fine. Brain training company pays $2 million over lack of demonstrable brain training. Now, if we had more time in this for, for instance, a seminar, I'd then give you much harder cases, such as videos where we say 90% of a baby's brain develops in the first five years and goes on to show this is a baby's brain on books, even though it doesn't look at all like a baby's brain on books. And even though that statistic may be a little uh, suspect, but if it's to get kids to read books, shouldn't we encourage its use? Again, how do we evaluate the use of brain science? Let's go with another one that's coming that has never been with us exactly this way before. We've been trying to enhance our brains since humans have been around. One way or another, education would be the primary way with, that we coerce it. So we take kids out of homes in this country at age five. We force them into a room and we manipulate their brains for eight hours a day. And if you don't subscribe to that, we send truant officers after you to get those kids, put them in a room and manipulate their brains. That's what we do. We call it education. It works really well for a lot of folks. Um, there are also other ways to manipulate the brain. This was captured, it's my favorite, it should have been last year, but now I'll keep using it. By 2016, man's intelligence and intellect will be able to be increased by drugs and by linking human brains directly to computers. This is already happening in our sort of pill nation, but it's happening um, for enhancement, not just for return to normal. This, high school, this uh, headline captures it well. Minnesota high school students taking Adderall to boost academic performance. These are otherwise normal high school students without any diagnosis of ADHD who say, my natural self is actually a B-plus student. I'm only getting Bs in the same way that I might study harder 
or change my diet or go to the library more, I want to add a different way to manipulate my brain. Uh, I want to, and it happens to be in a pill form. It happens to be drugs. Do we encourage this or not? How would we distinguish this from those of you who wake up every morning and say, I'm not myself till I've had my first cup of drugs, also known as caffeine, right? Um, but this sort of stuff is coming in new ways. And if we had more time, we could talk about the diagnostic, the mobile neurotechnology tools that are showing up. 